it's uh Gabrielle. Hey, sex? Flow state, also known as being in the zone. It's the feeling you get when your brain and your body truly become one. Your coordination is absolute. The task at hand becomes as simple as breathing. It's like the entire world around you fades away and you can only focus on one thing. going on here hey yo what the fuck this game this game right here bro oh my god i understand now why nearly every video had comments telling me to play ultra kill y'all were so persistent on it. Look, it look at it look at it so thank you it's honestly hard to put into words my experience with this game wait 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 wait, wait. the level design enemies bosses I will grind you down until the very sparks cry for mercy. My hands shall relish. Okay. He can't be that hard, right? He just has a sword, right? Alright, word. Bro. Oh, God. Bro. Ah! He's not even shooting anything at me. How is he killing me, dude? I don't get it. Has this ever happened to you? Bringing a gun to a sword fight like a murrican. To get more practice with the blade, let me introduce you to this video's sponsor, Warhaven. A 16 vs 16 player PvP medieval fantasy combat game. Wow, how much is it? <laughs> it's free, 99. Who needs guns when you got your good old fashioned metal sticks, baby? and maybe some hammers. You can choose to be a team player, like this wonderful lady healing her teammate with her piss hands. Or you can say, Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. And go off to decimate the battlefield solo. Both playstyles are viable. The game's easy to pick up, but hard to master. Attacking and guarding are simple button clicks, but there's a whole layer of depth and challenge for the big brain chads to uncover. What else do you want me to say? This dude just cut a guy in half mid-air. If you want a taste of true warfare, wishlist Warhaven on Steam right now. And play free during Steam Next Fest. Thank you, Warhaven, for buying my groceries. Anyways, I want to preface this video with, this is technically an early access title. The third and final act of the game is not done yet, and there's still a few weapons and variants missing. You might be wondering, does that mean I shouldn't buy the game yet? If you don't buy this game right now, I'm going to ultra kill your existence. But yeah, you should get it. Help support development. With that said, I'm going to try and avoid big spoilers, because this game surprisingly has a lot of depth and amazing set pieces that I think you should see for yourself. So. What is Ultra Kill? <laughs> I love how I can knock him around with the explosives. Oh my! Oh, that's why they call it that. Well, I'm glad you asked. Ultra Kill is a fast paced, ultra violent, retro, Gabriel Dunking Simulator. An FPS game in the same vein as titles like Doom and Quake. You play as a robot created by humanity. V1. A badass killing machine that is fueled by blood. And code Kelsky G Fuel. V1 was created by humanity during times of war, an age where robotics have become advanced and intelligent. However, some unknown calamity hit the mortal realm, leading to humanity's extinction. What was this calamity, you ask? Maybe it was another giant meteor. Maybe it was nuclear fallout. Maybe it was Dream putting back on the mask, plunging humanity into chaos, as they destroy themselves arguing whether he is hot or not. But who knows? Guess you gotta play the game. So, there is no longer any living beings on the mortal realm. Tell me where to find the blood. You have only one option for survival. Embark into the depths of hell, where there's a whole buffet of husks, demons, and angels to feast on. After you load up your plate, what utensils do you use to eat? Well, you use a whole lot of... We're not barbarians, though. We put napkins in our laps before we feast. The gameplay of Ultra Kill is what I think the thoughts of Tyler1's brain are. 
It is filled to the brim with action, movements, dodging. Oh, that was a cute throw. Here, it's my turn now. Let's wait right there. <laughs> yeah, moving on. Parries. And of course, a little dash of killing. The game kind of does a good job at easing you in. Dude, these guys pop like gushers. It starts you off with a simple pistol that can do a charge shot, and an enemy that runs in a straight line at you. Pretty basic stuff. Then, over the course of the game, it introduces more enemies, weapons, and weapon variants. <laughs> That's cool. If you want to truly thrive in this game, though, you can't just simply shoot your gun like some IGN employee. You're better than that. You kill in style. The game has a point system where the cooler you destroy your enemies, the better score you get. Kills while airborne, sliding, coin shots, multi-kills, fall damage. You name it. Look, V1 isn't just some mindless killing machine, okay? My man values drip. It's here where I introduce you to the best part of this game, punching. Punching in the game isn't just a way to throw hands with these hell spawns. No, no. Nah. Punching is also a way to parry any projectile. Alright, I'll give you one free shot. You just got print, bro! <laughs> Emphasis on any. Now, you might be wondering why I sound like I'm about to nuts at this parry mechanic that many other games have. Well, let me explain. The shotgun. You see these right here? These are also considered projectiles. Oh, what? What was that? What did I just do? I guess I just deflected something? Oh, wait a second. Wait a sec. Oh, wait a second. No way. Hold on. Oh my god. You can punch your own fucking bullets. This is just one example at how all of these weapons and variants still have complex ways they can interact with each other. Bro, whoever designed that deserves the craziest head on the planet. Take the coin pistol, for example. Yeah, work it, girl, yeah! Yeah, woo! Man, this show sucks. A gun that allows you to ricochet any projectiles by shooting its coins, which is pretty cool at first glance. But again, it can ricochet any projectile. That is never going to get old. I haven't mentioned it yet, but the game also has a grapple hook. Of course, why would it not? Hey, come here, I gotta tell you something. You've died. Oddly enough, there isn't any double jumping, which is kind of weird. You would think that a game like this would have it, but honestly, I like it. It really punishes poor jumps and really makes you think about where you are in the environment. All right, that definitely wasn't there before. All of this style goes into that drip score I mentioned before. There are other things that the game scores you on, such as time, enemies killed, and specific challenges. Don't fight the ferryman? That's what? You're telling me I didn't have to fight that guy at all? Oh my god. They total all together to give you an overall level rank. Come on, get into the S, ass. <laughs> Let's go, ass rank. P is the highest rank, standing for... Perfect. Perfect. And if you get enough of these P ranks, it can unlock some special encounters with even more bosses ready to make you their bitch. Here's the thing, right? Ultra Kill is a very replayable game. It's incredibly fun to go back and play through previous sections. You know, maybe back then you were still learning the controls, fumbling your weapons like a dumb baby. But then, the second time around, you feel like a badass. This is your motherfucking game now. You've learned it. You get all the P ranks. And you finally come back to this door, just to realize... You don't know shit. Very quick spoiler, here's a time code if you don't want to see what's behind the door. Alright, we good? Hey, yo, fuck this guy. Motherfucker looks like the spot from Spider-Man. Put some clothes on, okay? Ain't nobody trying to see that. Look, I almost didn't include this part in the video, but I knew the Ultra Kill community would gut me if I didn't at least P-rank one act. So, here you go. And I did it on hard, because mama didn't raise no bitch. I can immediately tell the difference of vibe in this. Like, what is this? Reports say that in 20 years, Gamers Next will look like this all around the world. 
Bro, the noises are like genuinely freaking me out. I don't like this at all. Like, what is this? Can't you just have like, don't you have like a normal door down here? You know, doorbell? Hello, ring ring, bitch. I'm here. After finally getting pooped out of this guy's butthole hallways, I finally found the first boss. Holy shit, what is that? <laughs> Is that the Yu-Gi-Oh prism? Honestly, I got the pyramid on the second try, but um, but I was not prepared for what happened next. Oh my god, I got him! Second try, dude! Two tries! Whoo, baby! Oh. Yo, who, who's your barber, though? Should probably go back. Oh, you have a butthole face. I mean, he has a heart right there. You know, maybe he's a nice guy. Or maybe not. What the fuck? What? what the fuck? Dude, that was like five seconds. One hit got me down to seven health. Oh, this is not gonna be good. This is not gonna be good, is it? Hey, where'd he go? Right, he just made my head hit the ceiling. That's embarrassing. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my god, okay, it's been longer than five seconds. This is the best run so far. Bro, he's, he's trying to kick me, dude. Like, he has demonic powers, but he's like, nah, I'm gonna fucking throw some Rock Lee kicks at you, dude. What a menace. Okay, this guy... Okay, you know what? Alright, let's go. This is gonna be the run. I feel it. This is gonna be the run. Alright, I can't keep playing this, dude. If I keep playing this, this guy's gonna be my cannon event. Alright, alright, fuck this guy. Hey, at least the soundtrack is good. Anyways, so basically, after all your molding and seething you did while getting all the P ranks, your reward is more molding. Thank you, game. Did I mention that this game is hard yet? Because it's really fucking hard. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm in danger. Oh boy! You're going to be seeing this screen a lot. It sounds like he's saying cuck. In fact, the standard recommended difficulty is hard. They want you to suffer. I mean, I usually play on hard anyways. Halo taught me that one. The game isn't unfair though. Every single death is your fault. Whether you didn't dodge, you fell off the map. Boom, baby. Okay. What? Bro, who put that hole there? Oh, wait. I think that was me. Or you used your weapon wrong. Cause an explosion when fired? Oh my god. So I can do explosive damage to my enemies too, that's pretty cool. Let's give it a try. Ow! What? I can damage myself with this thing? Oh no. Can I actually... Wait, can this actually kill me? Honestly, I think I killed myself just as much as the enemies did. Crap, man. At least I took him down with me. Never mind. But that's between you and I. This is especially prevalent in boss fights. The most prime example being the man himself, Gabriel. Ultra kill. Some people also pronounce it Gabriel, but I say Gabriel. Because let's be honest, look at him. He's totally a boy kisser. Insignificant friend. For all the chaos occurring on screen, it doesn't do anything just to spam your dodges. The game has a cooldown on them, and will punish your ass for doing it too much. I'm sure it is completely possible to beat this game without getting hit a single time, and for those people who can do that, I say, please, run for president. Because if you can navigate shit like this flawlessly, you can navigate anything. I've seen people comment things like, ah, this is my comfort game. Well, I'm surprised you have internet access in the insane asylum, you goddamn monsters. This game takes the term sweat fest to a whole new level, okay? This is actually what I look like playing this game. I'm not joking. Just listen. That's my keyboard, begging for mercy. Now, if you think the entire game is just this mindless, slaughtering gore fest, well, you'd be sorely mistaken. Um... Whoa, Jesus fucking Christ. With all the praises I have for this excellent gameplay, there is something else that this game does fucking beautifully. Oh, hell no, I'm good, thanks. And that is the atmosphere. Well, this gives me like really big Sans Undertale vibes right here, except a lot more red.
It honestly kind of shocked me how sucked into these environments I was, especially with a game where all the pixels combined makes up like one freckle on Ellie's face in The Last of Us. However, I have always been a believer in art style over pure graphical fidelity. It's why I love Hi-Fi Rush so much. Also, if you really want to, you can really make this game look retro. Oh god, this PSX setting though. Oh, it's so bad. Wait, I can make it worse? <laughs> <laughs> no fuck. Okay, let's just see how long it lasts. I can't even read the menu. <laughs> even being a more retro looking game though, the art direction here is just... Mwah. The enemies all have very distinct and cool designs, so in a microsecond glance, you know exactly what they are and what they do. What have I got? Every time you start a new level and you walk out that door, you never know what to expect. Ultra kill. I have gotten chills just from simply leaving the starting area. It's just hard to describe, man. There is just such a gut feeling that this game gives me whenever I enter certain rooms. It's just good, alright? It's really, really fucking good. The game does come with other modes besides the main story, and I'm sure more will be added after the final launch. The first main side piece is your classic survival mode. Well, that's pretty cool. You can customize it and stuff. You can change the, the floor, I'm guessing. <laughs> What is this? <laughs> well, almost normal. Oh, <laughs> It's just you, your entire arsenal, and increasingly difficult waves of enemies. It's not revolutionary or anything, but Ultra Kill's gameplay loop is just so goddamn addicting that simply just giving me a way to enjoy that gameplay without having to deal with puzzles or parkour is an angel's blessing. Last but not least, we have the game's sandbox mode, which is one of the funniest things I've probably seen in the game this year. So the sandbox is, then we'll do that. We'll end it off there. Wait, is this just... No, hold on. Is this just Gary's mod? <laughs> no way. Bro, it's literally just Gary's mod? That's right. They put the fucking Gary's Mod GM Construct map into Ultra Kill. Bro, it even has the same style spawning menu. Is this like the tool gun? Oh, dude, it's the, even the spawning menu is the same. It's just Gary's Mod. Dude, what? This is nuts. You can just actually just build your own maps. Will this explode if I shoot it? No, okay. Oh sh- oh no! I just- got it. I just love this game so much. After messing around for a little bit, I decided to see how long I could last against an army of Gabriels. See how long I can last here. Oh, okay, not very long. <laughs> oh, oh, what have I done? What have I done? No, not for power! Delete! Delete, delete, delete! Delete! <laughs> all in all, this game slaps so incredibly hard, and I thank every single comment mentioning this game. For an early access title, I experienced like, zero bugs I think. The only thing early access about this is just that they're still missing content, but the content that is here is fucking solid. And bro, it's only $25. Huh? For some of the best FPS gameplay to date, they also have a free demo if you want to try it yourself before buying. What games have demos nowadays? Giga Chat developers. I know this game isn't going to be for everyone. It can be astonishingly difficult, but once you really get into the zone and the mechanics start clicking all together and you're flying around effortlessly dodging and destroying your enemies, it becomes absolute art. Maybe you can even say it's like the Dark Souls of first-person Ah, oh my, hey, hey, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Hey, yo, chill. Ah, chill.